part that I can't get past. Your favorite baseball team is 18 and 25, which actually isn't the most horrible record at the risk of really lowering the bar in general. And yet they've got a minus 83 run differential, which tells you, and I'm talking definitively because this is a great predictor stat, that this team is going to get a lot, lot worse record-wise. Or is it? Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates 10, Rockies 5. I was over there covering it yesterday at PNC Park. Three run homers by both Jack Sawinski and Josh Van Meter among among other unexpected occurrences, not least of which is that offense producing a blowout in the other direction to actually assist that run differential. How have they done it? How have they won 18 games out of the 43 that they've played? That's what I keep coming back to. And I know that sounds excessively cynical, borderline sarcastic, but I mean it because the starting pitching has been beyond terrible. The offense has been terrible. The relief pitching has been very good, but in large part because of one extraordinary individual at the back end, of course, David Bednar. And oh yeah, by the way, the team's best player has been anything but meaning, of course, that Brian Reynolds is hovering barely above 200 for his batting average and still has nine, count them, nine RBIs through nearly three months of the season. But which is the reality that the star player is going to figure it out and kind of level this field for everyone? meaning that the offense isn't going to be good or anything, but at least it won't be terrible. How about that Yoshi Tsutsugo, wow, eventually gets booted from the heart of the order, at least, with his 167 batting average. And you see someone who's competent take his place. I mean, I'm okay with Michael Chavis as a stopgap, but I want to see Mason Martin, who last night for Indianapolis hit his third home run in as many games. Or from the rotation standpoint that, you know, Bryce Wilson's one guy that you get rid of. Maybe Zach Thompson's the next. And don't get me started on on Thompson. He, He had a nice start to his May, but two of those three starts were against the Reds. And yesterday he goes and gets bopped around for seven hits and four runs over three innings. I'm sorry. That's... I. It's just starting to look like who he is. Point is, maybe he's the next one out. And you just start seeing a gradual attrition and replacement that brings up the general value of the offense and the starting pitching and whatever else here. So you can kind of put into reverse the run differential tragedy that seems to be looming. Or... You can just do what I did for keen, sharp analysis and walk over to Ben Gamble and ask him what he thinks. That's coming up next. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. So here we go. Ben Gamble's freshly shorn, doesn't even have the beard or anything like that, but he still has all uh, his wisdom. When you talk about the 2022 Buccos, you know, it's it's going to take a village, you know, and 
you know, losing bogey, you know, that's really, really hurts our lineup. And, you know, young guys stepping up is, I mean, Jack's a good player. You know, Cal Mitchell's a really good player. These guys, you know, they're getting opportunities here. And, you know, obviously Cal's pretty fresh still, but Jack's been up here and, you know, he's getting his feet wet and he's getting comfortable in there and you can see it. I mean, you can see when he believes. And, um, Does it then, pick you up too, man? You're going into the box. You're there in a position to win the game. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You know, B-Ray had great at-bats out of the leadoff spot today. And yeah. First to third, I saw him. <laughs> you know, guys play hard every day. You know, that's one thing I can yeah, I can guarantee, you know, is we're going to leave it out there every day. You know, whether we come up on the winning side or the losing side, you know, it's guys are gassed after games because we play the game the right way. Did you happen to hear at the very beginning of that, Gim will say the 2022 Buckos. I loved it. I don't think I've heard a player other than Neil Walker refer to the Pirates as the Buckos, like an active uniform wearing player in forever. What a moment that was. I probably should have made the whole episode just about that. As it was, though, Gamble had a couple of other strong points. The Pirates do have to be able to rely on each other. As he put it, it takes a village and all that other stuff. The Pirates are, to hear the man, experiencing kind of an uplifting feeling as a result of these younger players making their way up and making their initial impressions. Why? Well, on one hand, there's the intangible. There's the sappy stuff. We all love to see the kid get his first hit. Uh, we love seeing Jack Sawinski do it, and his parents are in the crowd, and all that other happy stuff. He did it in his hometown, Chicago. And we love seeing Cal Mitchell come up. Cal Mitchell's one of those classic hard worker guys, did everything to improve. And he comes up, gets his first knock on his first night, comes up with a double yesterday, RBI double. But I won't leave it there. I, I don't think it's about, you know, pianos and violins and everything. I think it's the fact that these guys can play, you know, let's not overthink this stuff. If your younger players are marginally better than the older guys that they're replacing, you can say, all right, it's time for a youth movement. It's time to give these guys a chance. It's time to, you know, if we're going to lose or we're going to stink, let's at least do it with the young guys. Or your young guys could be miles better than the old guys that are replacing. If Mason Martin comes up from Indianapolis, then you would think that he will someday, being that he's seen as one of the best power prospects in the upper minors. If Martin comes up and hits one home run off a non-catcher, he will have outdone Yoshi's production through three full months. He wouldn't, you would think, if you look at his progression from Greensboro to Altoona to Indianapolis, he's done this at every level. Why the Pirates seem to be walking on eggshells with him, I'm not sure. I know that he's not perfect. I know that he struck out a lot earlier this season. I know that he's got a history of strikeouts in the minors. I also know that of late he's cut down on those considerably. It's now one of every four at-bats, and whereas that used to get you labeled 20, 30 years ago in baseball as a, wow, man, this dude strikes out all the time, that's actually no big deal for, quote, our 2022 buckos. So bring them up. Bring up Martin. Keep going here. This isn't done. Bring up Martin. Bring up O'Neill Cruz. Bring up any freaking body who can pitch, let them be the village. Not to entertain you or me, but because they're better baseball players. When we come back, just one question. Welcome 
Welcome back. And today's J1Q comes from Bill Zitch, who asks, DK, do you think Brian Hayes' wrist is bothering him? He doesn't seem to be hitting the ball very hard. I'd love this question on so many levels because it challenges both, you know, reporting skills, being able to get, get information, but also analytical skills because there is now data to tell you whether or not a player is hitting the ball as hard or to the fields wherever he's hitting best or at the right launch angle to make sure that he's not just, you know, slugging away at a bunch of atom balls toward infielders. And Kibrian's case right now is fascinating. And I'm going to start with the reporting part. I have spoken with Key about his wrist. Key is not one of those people who is shy about sharing information as to whether or not he's hurting or to what degree. His wrist is not a problem. It hasn't been a problem since before spring training when he was still just kind of, you know, easing his way into his swing and making sure that he felt completely comfortable going all out to all fields, including pulling the ball. No issues since then. He's obviously had a couple of other things that have bugged him, but it hasn't been the wrist. Now, as evidence of that, in 2020, in that one magical month that he came up, and he was just murdering the ball everywhere. And we were convinced that this was just the next great star in Pittsburgh sports. Not that he's been some disappointment since then. Just saying, that's how we felt at the time. The ball came off his bat with an average exit velocity of 92.8 miles an hour. And then it dropped in 2021 when he did have the wrist, wrist issue to a flat 90, and this year it's right back up to 92.4 miles an hour. So it's 0.4 miles per hour off of where it was at his absolute pinnacle. So you think, well, what's happening here? Well, his launch angle is still pretty much where you'd want it to be. Virtually digit for digit with where it was in 2020. And he is occasionally pulling the ball. You still see him going the other way a lot. But as I'd mentioned on the show earlier this week, on the episode that was mostly dedicated to Key, that, I think, is because he's just hitting where he's being pitched. If they're throwing you outer half, outer half, outer half, you're a moron to try to pull the ball. You know, that's going to get you a 6-3 every single time. So what's missing? Oh, boy, you're not going to want to hear this, but it's lousy luck. It really is. He is lining up right now all his peripherals, all his data, and everything that's known, meaning from the reporting standpoint, he's ready to just take off. Now, I say that, and he's currently sitting still with that egg in the home run column. So I can't say this too boldly or too confidently, but it sure feels like that's coming. I don't know that it'll be this weekend at all places Petco Park, but I do think it's going to be pretty soon. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. Mm-hmm.